Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Nicolay and welcome. In this short video, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of your next video or telephone appointment with a doctor. Why is this important now? Because during the coronavirus pandemic, video and telephone appointments are gonna become the main way you speak to your doctor. As a GP, I love it when patients come to an appointment prepared. Even the Dr. Google printouts don't faze me that much because I know we'll get way more out of our 10 minutes together if we're both a little prepared. This is more so than ever before with video appointments. For many doctors, this will be a brand new field, but it's also the best way to keep you guys safe during this pandemic. So with a little bit of preparation, you will help us massively and help make sure you get the best care first time around. Your first question then should be, do you need to see a doctor at all? The NHS website has a huge amount of information on a range of different problems, symptoms, from everything from dandruff to rabies. NHS 111 online also has a symptom checker where you just type in your symptoms and it'll point you in the direction so that you get the right care from the right place. Repeat prescriptions also don't need you to see us anymore. In fact, at a time when practices around the country are shutting their doors to the patients, your best bet is to start ordering repeat prescriptions online. If you call your practice receptionist, they'll be able to guide you through that process. And then once it's set up, you can forevermore order your repeat prescriptions from the comfort of your own home using the NHS app. And then finally, if you're in self-isolation and you need a sick note for your employer, you can actually do this online too. And I'll include a link that will guide you through that process at the end of this video. During this pandemic, don't assume that you'll be able to see your usual GP or even that they'll have access to your normal medical records. The safest bet is to try and help the doctor out by doing the legwork yourself. So before the consultation starts, have a think about all of your medical problems, past and present, and jot them down beforehand. Try and find a list of your medications and make sure you know exactly what you're taking each one for. If you're calling about a problem that's bothered you before or been bothering you for some time, try and recall everything that's been done so far to try and save the doctor having to look through months worth of medical records and letters. If you can do all of that, you will make yourself a dream patient for that consultation. This is where video and telephone appointments differ from face-to-face -face appointments. You get to play doctor. Your doctor will need as much information as possible in order to keep you safe and to assess your risk. So depending on what tools you have available at home, I recommend checking and recording the following before your appointment. The first thing to check is your temperature. And I recommend an ear-based thermometer rather than a forehead strip, which is less accurate. All you need to do is turn it on, pop it into your ear, press the button and wait for the beep. There we go. Next up then is your heart rate. And you can do this yourself just by turning your hand palm up, placing your fingers over the wrist towards the thumb side of the wrist, just like this, and pressing down very lightly until you start to feel your pulse. If you're struggling with that, an alternative is to find the corner or the angle of your jaw, run your fingers down, to the neck and to press very lightly there and again you will start to feel a pulse and simply count how many beats you're producing in one minute. That will give you your pulse rate. The next one then is breaths per minute and I think this one's a really difficult one to do because as soon as we start thinking about our breaths we inadvertently start controlling our breathing. So I recommend getting a friend or a relative or a colleague to come and help you out with this one. The first thing to do is to try and distract yourself. So read or think of a song in your head or close your eyes and think about what you've got to do that day. Ask your friend or colleague to 
Watch the rise and fall of your chest and to count how many breaths you're making in one minute. An alternative, if it's someone you're comfortable with, is to ask them to place their hand over your abdomen. That may well help them notice when you're taking a breath in and out as well. Now, I know many of you will have a blood pressure machine at home. So if you do, definitely use it. Just slip this over your arm and press the button and then record what your blood pressure is before the appointment. Most blood pressure machines also tell you what your pulse rate is as well. So it's a bit of a double whammy. The other thing you might have at home is one of these devices called a pulse oximeter. They're especially good if, you, if you've got a condition that may, makes you prone to breathlessness, because what they measure is how saturated your blood is with oxygen. 95% plus is what we're looking for, and you simply slip it over your finger like this, keep your hand as still as possible, ideally on a flat surface, and it will give you a number out of 100, and that's your oxygen saturation. These next two devices you would probably only have if you had asthma or diabetes. And I'm talking about a peak flow meter for monitoring asthma and a blood glucose meter for diabetes. Now, if you have either of these, do definitely use them before your appointment because they will be really, really handy to have those readings. But fear not if you can't produce them. But perhaps the most useful tool to have at your disposal is just the camera on your phone. Having access to a photograph of a rash or large tonsils or a swollen joint can really be invaluable to a doctor during a consultation. Even in video appointments, we often find that the quality of the image in a photograph is much better than in a video link. So I would suggest for all consultations where you can do this, take a picture of the affected area, send it into the practice, and then the doctor can have it to hand when they speak with you. If you can do all of that in the 10 to 15 minutes before your appointment, then you'll be doing your part to help us keep you safe. I'm gonna include along with this video some links for where you can get some of the kit we've talked about today if you want it. But I think as a minimum, every household should have its own ear thermometer. And you can get one of those just from your local pharmacy. Also, if you have asthma or type 1 diabetes, you should also be able to get a peak flow meter or a blood glucose monitor, respectively, on prescription. But lastly, I want to just mention the most useful tool of all during a consultation, any consultation. And that's a pen and paper. Sounds daft, I know, but research shows that we forget half of everything our doctors tell us. And of that half, half again, we remember wrong. So definitely scribble down notes during your consultation, especially when the doctor tells you what to do if things get worse. You'll thank yourself for it in an emergency. But that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've got any comments, questions, recommendations, please post them below. But most importantly, stay safe. Bye-bye.